Welcome to Crypto Explained, the easiest way to educate yourself in a ride around the block. Here we try to explain crypto topics as simply as possible so everyone can understand. This is the channel's first video and came to life at the request of friends who were complaining that there were too few explanatory videos in Dutch. So the Dutch version of this video will follow soon. In this video, I'll be talking about Hex. Hex is a sort of savings account, but I get the feeling a lot of people don't fully understand how it works. I'll also be explaining the crypto terms needed in a short and simple way so people new to crypto can also understand. Feel free to use the timestamps below to skip ahead. It took me a lot of time to make this, so please let me know if you learned something from this or if my teaching skills simply don't apply to crypto. Nevertheless, no financial advice on this channel. Just gathering the facts so my lazy friends don't have to. First of all, what is a blockchain? In a nutshell, blockchain is a system for storing data in a chain of data blocks. This data can be anything, but for Bitcoin, the number one blockchain, this data is literally a list of transactions that can be consulted by anyone. For example, it might look like this. A pays B $100, X pays Y $15, I pays R $47. The blocks on the Ethereum blockchain, however, can also contain smart contracts aside from these transactions. Later in this video, I'll explain what this means. For now, it's important to know that every block on the chain always contains information from the previous block on the chain. This data is secured by using cryptography, and if a block is full, it can only be added to the end of the chain. All of this, together with the fact that the copies of these data blocks exist on thousands of computers around the world, make it so that a block added to the chain can never be changed or tampered with. Hex is an application built on such a blockchain. It's a decentralized application, in short, DAP. It's like any other regular app built on the blockchain, and in the case of Hex, on the Ethereum blockchain. It runs completely automated and independently, so there's no need for anyone to oversee or manage what's happening. You could easily compare the Hex DAP to a bank where you'd have a time deposit, a term account. This is when you sign a contract saying you block a certain amount of money for a certain time. You're putting that money at the bank's disposal for this agreed period of time, meaning that you can't withdraw any of that money until the end of the contract. Most of the time you get more earnings, or in other words, more yield on this type of account than with a regular savings account, but you'll have to be aware of some factors if you aim to save up these earnings to buy a new car, for example. The yield you get from term deposit accounts might be higher than from a regular savings account, but in traditional banks there are a lot of people, intermediaries, who need to make a living. Of course this is charged to the client, which means that that yield will never be extremely high. So this is one factor you need to bear in mind. Secondly, we're also dealing with inflation. With the yield you've made at the end of the contract, you'll of course receive more money than you put in. But today, the inflation rates for the euro or the dollar are so high that it might well be that the effective value of the money you've earned is actually lower than the value of the money you originally deposited. So what seemed like a great deal at the start of the contract might not seem that attractive at all when the term is over. Hex works in a similar way as these term deposits. You agree to a similar contract, but in this case it's called a smart contract. Smart contracts are written in computer code and can be made and signed in the Hex DAP. The moment the contract is signed, everything runs completely automatically. The smart contract knows when the agreed criteria are met and certain actions need to be taken. The written code is fixed. There's no middlemen who need to catch their percentage, in contrast to all traditional banks. It's a completely decentralized application without the possibility of ever changing anything, not even by the founder, Richard Hart. The blocking of your hex in one of these smart contracts is called staking. To keep things clear, I'll start by explaining in broad strokes what happens when you stake. After that, we'll take a deep dive into the contract so that you can fully understand the process behind it. Before you stake, first of all, you have to indicate in the smart contract for how long you want to do this and of course how many hex tokens you want to stake. When this is done and you've sealed the contract, your hex tokens are taken out of circulation. They're burnt, as it were. In return, you get a certain amount of T-shares. During the course of the contract, you can't trade these T-shares, but you do earn yield daily for every T-share that you own. 
I'll explain later where this yield is coming from exactly, because they could run up pretty high if you stake for a long period. At the end of the contract, the T-shares are burnt and you can unstake. In this process, your stake is freed up together with the yield you've earned daily. So this gives you a broad understanding of how it works. With crypto, however, it's crucial that you understand a project completely before you invest, and even more if it's a project for which you block your money for a certain period. So I'm happy to explain the different phases in detail. In sealing a smart contract, it's important to first think really well about how much you're going to stake and especially for how long. The amount of T-shares you're getting and the yield that comes with it depend on this. The more hex tokens you stake, the more T-shares you get. The same goes for the longer you stake. Logical. But most of all, you need to take into account the bonuses you can receive. You can receive up to 10% bonus for the amount of hex tokens you stake. This means that on top of your stake, extra hex tokens are calculated to determine your T-shares. To avoid misunderstandings, this isn't a bonus in hex tokens that you will receive after you stake, but it does give you more T-shares with which you earn a lot more yield during the stake on a daily basis. However, to get the maximum bonus of 10%, you need to stake 150 million tokens. For most people, this bigger pays better isn't the most interesting. But, however small or big the bonus, it's still a bonus. What is interesting, however, and what makes Hex such a big success is the longer pays better. The tokens can be staked from one day to 5,555 days, which is about 15 years. The longer you stake your tokens, the bigger the bonus. For every year you stake, you get an extra 20% calculated in your T-shares. For five years, you double it, and from 10 years up, you triple it. A bonus of 200% is the maximum you can get out of it, so for stakes longer than 10 years, the bonus stays the same. Just like with the other Bigger Pays Better bonus, it's only used to calculate the amount of T-shares. At the end of the ride, you get back what you staked plus the yield you made on all the T-shares. As you can see, the Longer Pays Better bonus can make you a lot more than the Bigger Pays Better bonus. People who can miss their money for 10 years are royally rewarded with 200% more T-shares. A lot of people even choose to stake for more than 10 years and go for the maximum of 5,555 days even though they know this doesn't get you an extra bonus. This has everything to do with the price you pay for a T-share. The code in the smart contract is written in such a way that with every day that goes by, you pay more hex for a T-share. The price of a T-share is only going up. I'll explain with an example. Say you stake 10,000 hex for one year, which gets you exactly one T-share. During this year, the T-share gets you yield, and when the contract ends, you're happy to discover you've made an extra 2,500 hex. In fact, you're so happy that you even decide there and then to stake again, preferably again for one T-share. But when you're making the new contract, you notice that 10,000 hex won't buy you one T-share anymore. You won't even get it if you add your 2,500 hex you earned in yield. This is because, in ending every contract, anyone's contract, a recalculation of the T-share price is made. In doing this, the current price of a T-share is automatically compared to your original stake and the total of yield you've earned combined. If the T-share price is already higher than in this case your 12,500 hex, nothing happens. This higher price is what you're going to have to pay for any new stake. On the other hand, it can also happen that at the end of your stake, the price of a T-share is lower than the hex you've earned in total. In this case, the price will be automatically adjusted to avoid your paying less for the same amount of T-shares. So the code makes sure that the longer stakes are always rewarded with more T-shares than shorter successive stakes. It's perhaps also important to know that T-shares stand for trillion shares. When you make a smaller stake and you don't receive a full T-share, people speak of B-shares or billion shares and M-shares or million shares. Seeing that as time goes by, it's going to get harder and harder to get a full T-share, people will speak more of B-shares. This aside, during the whole duration of the contract, you can monitor how much these T-shares make and yield on a daily basis. At the moment of making this video, the average yield of all stakes is about 38%, and the average stake duration is about 6.6 .6 years. These are pretty attractive numbers if you ask me, but who exactly is paying this yield? 
The first thing that comes to mind with a lot of people is that you need new stakers to pay out the yield of someone who unstakes. Some are quick with their judgments and are calling this a scam or a Ponzi scheme without doing any research. This is one of the reasons I wanted to make a video about Hex so that perhaps even a cow could give an informed opinion about yield other than from its own milk. So be sure to watch the video till the end. I'll be leaving some links of YouTubers I learned a lot from about Hex as it's always a good idea to get your information from different sources. Now, if the yield is not coming from new stakers, where the hell is it coming from? First of all, Hex undergoes an annual inflation of a maximum of 3.69%, which is paid out to the stakers. This is already a big source of income if you know that at this moment, only 10% of all Hex tokens are staked. 90% of Hex tokens are simply kept in crypto wallets without being staked and so don't profit from this advantage. Next to that, there's also a system of penalties which are also paid out to the stakers. You pay the biggest penalty when you want to end your stake prematurely. If you've already done half your time, luckily you rarely lose any of your original stake. The penalty is calculated from the yield you've already earned. But if you've done less than half the time, you lose the yield and on top of that, you could lose a big part of your original investment. This is potentially a large amount that is distributed among the other stakers. On the other hand, there's also a penalty for ending your stake too late. As I explained earlier, at the end of your stake, the T-shares are burned and your HEX tokens plus yield are freed up. From this moment, you have two weeks time to unstake and collect your money. After that, the smart contract is unrelenting and your tokens are out the door. For every week you're late, you lose 1% until everything's gone. Just like the inflation, these penalties are distributed among the stakers. The big difference between the two is that the payment of the inflation is done daily and equally, whereas the penalties can vary heavily from one day to another, making some days more profitable than others. So it's important that if you decide to stake, you do the full term. If you're able to respect the conditions of the smart contract and you unstake within the two weeks, you have two options. Either you choose end stake, where after burning your T-shares, you receive the HEX tokens you've earned directly, or you choose good accounting. With this option, your T-shares are also burned, but you choose not to receive your tokens right away. People choose this option when they want to collect their profit in a new calendar year for tax purposes. Another reason to choose this option is when the gas fees or transaction fees are too high at the end of a stake. On the Ethereum blockchain, these costs can be very high at times, running up to $200 per transaction. This, by the way, is why Hex's founder, Richard Hart, is developing a new blockchain. A transaction on this Pulse chain would cost less than one cent. More about this in another video, perhaps. Whatever the reason, if you choose good accounting, you won't be getting any more penalties, so you don't have to worry about a two weeks term. If you stick to the rules of the contract, staking HEX can be a fantastic savings account. It's designed in such a way as to change the mentality of traders. Traders are people who jump from one token to the next to try and time the top or bottom to sell and buy at the most profitable moments. In reality, emotions make that during the volatile fluctuations of cryptocurrencies, most people do the exact opposite. They only buy when it has already risen significantly because of FOMO and can't take it when a coin drops 80% and sells in a panic. While HEX is designed to stake your tokens for a long period, it makes stakers into hodlers, which stands for hold on for dear life. In the HEX community, there is great coherence and they call themselves hexagons. The HEX stakes make you less inclined to let your emotions take over. Even for HEX, an 85% drop isn't abnormal like for any coin or token. Actually, HEX has recently dipped 90% and this might not even be the bottom. But because the penalties for prematurely unstaking are so big, most stakers are not even thinking of selling. It actually takes away the stress which traders deal with every day, every hour, every minute. So just stake, enjoy daily life, and sleep on both ears, but maybe put an alarm on to avoid those penalties. I suppose it should be clear by now that the longer you make these stakes, the bigger your yield. But who in the world wants to wait for 15 years to reap the benefits? No one, or at least no one I know anyway. The solution for this, used by practically every hexagon, is a staking ladder. The principle is simple. After you've decided how much money you want to invest, you also decide for yourself the intervals at which you want to get something back, monthly, quarterly, annually. 
You can choose the period yourself, but the intention is to divide your investment equally over several successive stakes. In this way, not all your stakes will get you equally as much yield, but the upside is you don't have to wait for 15 years to get your first profits. Another big advantage is that you can create a snowball effect. When a stake ends, you could, for example, take the yield out and keep using the amount you originally staked to restake. In this way, you're creating an endless staking ladder, which gets you a passive income that gets bigger and bigger when the longer stakes end. In this way, hexagons are trying to build their own win for life to gain financial freedom. The happy few who were in on it from the beginning in 2019 have already succeeded in this. This marks the end of this video. I hope it was all clear. Use the timestamps below to watch again any parts you might not have fully understood or ask your questions in the comments section. I'm also adding some links to other YouTubers and websites if you want to dig deeper. Like and subscribe if you learned something today. And let me know which crypto projects you'd like me to cover in the next ride around the blockchain. Thanks for watching.